How's it going everybody? This is Ruby, and this is episode 106 of my Feed the Beast Machine tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the extractor from Rotary Craft. So this machine is really, really useful for processing raw ores. So first the ores start up here in this box here. It didn't get processed through this first slot, then the second one, third, and then the fourth. At each of these stages, the ore has a chance of doubling. So it could double here, double here, double there, double there. So that's why it's better than, say, Fortune 3 on one of these ores, or even using a pulverizer or macerator or something like that. So over here is your power, your speed, and your torque, and you'll notice that there are four bars. These four bars represent each stage, so 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. If one of these bars is all the way down or is not filled out, there's a pretty good chance that the ore will not process at that stage. It will actually just collect up here and then stay there. So if we go ahead and take a look at crafting this machine, it's a little more advanced. It takes a drill, which is uh, 7 HSLA steel. It takes netherrack, stone, a oak plank, a base panel, a shaft unit, which is 3 HSLA steel, and then 2 HSLA steel ingots, and then an impeller, which is just for HSLA steel ingots around a HSLA steel gear. And this does have to be made within the work table. So powering this machine is a little more advanced um, than say like a grinder or something like that. So here I have our basic RF setup. So I have a resonant energy cell, a magnetostatic engine, and we have a CBT unit. And the CBT unit has some belts in there and it's actually set to a four belt ratio. This is actually more belts than you'll actually need and it sets the speed with a lubricant bucket in here. It then comes in here and you can see it gets full speed on every single process and then full torque on every single process as well as power. This is going to make sure that the ores will actually go all the way through the machine and end up getting processed. Now, one thing we didn't mention at the beginning is that this machine actually does need a water supply. So this ore, for example, will not process until we give it water. If we come over here to this setup, I already have a water setup running into it. And if we put this uh, diamond or dust into there, and we go ahead and turn this on, and it's not going to go through the third step quite so well with just a magnetostatic engine, but you'll see that now that we added the water, uh, this will go ahead and process through this second step. And now when it gets to the third, it's not going to work quite so well. So now that we've added a CVT unit set to 4, and by the way, you do need 8 belts for this to work, right? I was mistaken. I thought I had 16 in there for some reason. And if we go ahead and put this diamond ore slurry back into here with all of them maxed out, you can see it's actually going to go ahead and process them. So to automate this, uh, there's a couple different ways. Is that I'm going to go ahead and put a servo in there, and I set it to ignore redstone. And if I throw this diamond ore in there, you can use item ducts. Uh, I personally use a... Uh, ME system to do this and I use the export buses, the precision export buses and I tell it anytime I get diamond ore because of my quarry pluses that have silk touch I tell it anytime I get diamond ore to shove it into here so it'll get processed. At the end of this you will get flakes and all you have to do with the flakes is actually just cook it in a furnace. So if we grab a iron furnace and we grab some coal put it down put some cold coke in there and then we put our diamond ore flakes it will actually cook the flakes and it will become then a full ore this is the same for any of them so for example we get a diamond and if you did emeralds you'd get an emerald etc and also one thing that we forgot to mention at the beginning is that this machine does need its power from the bottom so that you can't just plug power directly into the sides of it is that the actual uh, hole for it is on the bottom of the machine even though it doesn't have a hole, it still requires the power to be sent that way. So all you have to do is use these bevel gears. And to kind of set this up is, is when you put it down or you hit it with your screwdriver, it's not going to change anything, but it's going to show you colors. Is that you can see we got yellow, magenta, blue, black, and then orange. And then I believe the bottom is maybe red. I forget what color it is. But you have to set this up so that your magnetostatic engine or your CVT unit or whatever your power source is, like for example, if it was coming in this way and then we needed to go up top, is you right click on this and we need it to come from, uh, what is this, orange and go to blue. So we click on the blue, on the orange, and then we click on the blue. And you're going to see that the machine's going to change. And then you'll actually be able to see the gears inside 
are going to be coming from one way and then going out the other way. That's going to be it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions about this machine, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer your question. If this video helped you out or if you enjoyed it, a rating would be very much appreciated. And subscribe. As always, have new Feed the Beast videos come out almost every other day, if not every day. Thank you.